Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I want to revisit a video that I had done a while ago on the J. Tolan Media One Mount San Jacinto IR observation from 123 miles. Now Sleeping Warrior did a rebuttal to somebody that debunked this and then I rebutted his rebuttal. However, I wasn't very satisfied with that and I thought I wanted to revisit it real quick. So I hope you enjoy this video, which I'm entitling The Arrogance of Ignorance. And here we have another dishonest baller claiming that the Earth is obviously spherical because of derpa derpa derpa. In this video by Ruhif, he claims that um, points A and B are accurate, C and D are accurate, but E and F are not. Who cares? We'll give you E and F. You can have them. The issue that I'm in most interested in is whether or not JTOL the media is correct. Should this actually be seen on a spherical Earth or not? It's 123 miles away and it's only at 50 meters high, it's on a viewing point. So this is where my interest is. And I was most interested by Ruhif's comment towards the end. Now let's hear what he says and let's rip it apart. Ruhif, you are lying. Well, he certainly is opinionated on this, isn't he? Well, let's go ahead and cue up the music and then we'll have a look at this observation and Sleeping Warrior's response to it. And then we'll just try and sort it out a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and set up the problem first. Now here we have Mount San Jacinto, which is just east of uh, Los Angeles, California. And we have an observation point 123 miles or about 195 kilometers away at Point Dumay. The elevation there is about 54 meters or about 160 feet. These have all been confirmed and they're not in question. And here is the photograph in question. This is an infrared photograph from about 197 kilometers and about 54 four meters in elevation, taken by J. Tolan Media One. Now let's let Anthony go over this a little bit more and see what he has to say. About I was going to ignore this video because it's so ridiculous, um, but it's because of all the ballers that are jumping all over this. Um, if you check some of the comments out, you can see how um, Wolfie, for example, another dishonest baller, claims that he's going to send everybody here to this video to see the so-called debunk. Well, the debunk's based on a total misrepresentation of fact, a bit like conspiracy cats. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to point out why this is completely not a nonsense to point, point out where you claim sea level is. Notwithstanding the fact that it's wrong, but pointing out sea level is dishonest, Ruhif. Because the mountain sits on a prominence. It sits on a plane. It sits above San, jo San Gogal Gogonio Pass. Um, it's all, its height is only 2536 meters. Because it sits above sea level, we can't see sea level. And for you to be referencing its actual elevation to sea level, that's because you need to account for the missing curve. Okay, Anthony, I've got to stop you right there because we need to clear something up here. Now, Mount San Jacinto is 10,834 feet high, or 3,302 meters. Now, what you're talking about here is the prominence. That is not the elevation above sea level. Mountain heights are given in elevation above sea level. The prominence is where you park your car and start the climb to the top. And that gives you an idea of how far you have to physically walk up the hill to get to the top. Let me show you. Okay, Anthony, let me see if I can help you out here a little bit. Say this is the ocean, this blue line. That's sea level, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a mountain. Now the mountain will come on up, it'll come on up to a peak, and it'll go off like that. Now, say there's a road that comes up here, and there's a car park right there, okay? Here's a couple of numbers that you need to look into. The height of the mountain is listed as above sea level, and in this case it's 10,000 832 feet. Now, what you're quoting is the prominence. So basically what that is, is that is the distance that once you start your climb, 
it takes to get up to the top of the mountain. And as you can see, you start from a certain elevation above sea level over here. That's not the entire height of the mountain. Now, the reason that that is done that way is that when you're looking at a mountaineering website, as you did, they're more interested in how far do I have to climb from where I start until I get to the top of the mountain. However, mountain heights are given in elevation above sea level. Now, that started off a long time ago, but think about a very useful application. If I'm flying along at about 8,000 feet, and this number right here is only 6,000 feet, according to you, I would clear the mountain. According to me and the rest of the world, I'm going to hit it about right there. So that's the difference between the prominence and the actual elevation of the mountain. Glad I could help out. I mentioned from San Gagonio Pass up to the mountain there. So the quick elevation data, so you've got 476-ish, 475 meters, that's where it's measured from, up to its peak at about 3200 meters. So basically you take one from the other and you're left with a value. But that's where it's measured from. You can't measure it from down to sea level because you can't see the sea. You are at least around about 470 meters above sea level. That is why you can't reference the sea. Oh dear God, Anthony. If the pass has an elevation, that's in reference to sea level. Do you think the mountain has a different form of elevation compared to the pass? I mean, you, you do see that, right? I can't see it. So, Ruhif referencing the elevation data is totally wrong and it's misleading people. It's, it's cancelling out the curve. That's basically what it's doing. Okay, so basically what you're saying is that by using the correct elevation data for the mountain, he's canceling out the curve. Whereas you are fudging the elevation data for the mountain by using where you start the climb from to get to the top rather than the actual height of the mountain. And he's the one trying to fudge the data? So if you look at the uh, elevation data, you can see that the prominence value um, is clearly in the background, the way it appears. Um, you can see the height of the mountain. You can see where the water actually is in real world. But the proof that this is the flat, flat earth proof that we are pointing out is the prominence. The prominence is obstructed by the mountains in the, in the, in the just in front of Mount Jacinto. And that by that very fact, it proves that we are looking at a flat plane. We are looking at all of the mountain. J Tall Immediate is correct. Ruhif is clearly wrong. And you can tell this. If you've got an, any ounce of honesty in you whatsoever, you can tell that them mountains, the prominence mountains, the thing that's separating it from the land it's on to the sea, are clearly just in front of Mount Jacinto. You can tell because they're similarly shaded, and you can also tell because they are not clear, they are blurred. So blurry and uh, shaded, uh, the similar tone, means they're in the background, exactly the way we see. If it was the way that Ruhif says, it means that that little spike at the beginning of the prom uh, the beginning of the relief, that little one right at the front, that's what we're looking at is the obstruction. And that's clearly wrong. JT J told the media is right. None of this mountain should be seen. Ruhif and all of the ballers are all dishonest. This is not explained at all on a sphere. It should not be seen. J told the media is correct. You guys are wrong. Okay, let's see if we can sum this up real quick. First of all, Mr. Sleeping Warrior Anthony Riley is saying that if we had integrity, we would agree with his word salad there. Second of all, he asserts that this is a flat earth proof because this mountain should not be able to be seen from Malibu, 197 kilometers away. Yet right here, we can clearly see that 1,442.8 meters of this mountain will be visible, and about 1,859 meters will be hidden by the curve of the earth. Let's see how that works out with the actual image of the mountain. Okay, so first let's go ahead and have a look at our line of sight from Point du May to Mount San Jacinto. And there it is on the red line. Now let's go on down to Google Earth and we're gonna to go to this line of sight. 
and there's Gilman Hot Springs. Now, if we go ahead and angle this up a little bit, we're going to see Mount San Jacinto right along the line of sight. Now, if you were to follow this line and bring it right up to where that cross is, you're going to see that that is at about 1,800 meters. All right, we'll go in a little bit closer. I got a picture of that. But let's go ahead and just bring this a little bit closer. Here's our cross right here, see? Now, if we bring this up, there it is, roughly. It's about 1846 meters right there. Now, let's go ahead and take these into Photoshop. And as you see here, this is the original infrared J. Tolan Media One photograph from Malibu, California. There it is. We've all seen it. Now notice under number one, you see the peak of Mount San Jacinto. Under number two, you see the peak of a very prominent side mountain. So we can use those as landmarks. And then we're going to bring in the image that we captured from Google Earth right along the line of sight. You'll see the red line of sight. Also, please have a look at the peak of Mount San Jacinto and that side peak under number two. Look at that. See how they match up perfectly? Let's look back a little bit. There it is right there. See how they're perfectly matched up? I want you to look at the red line of sight. Do you remember that red cross mark that we made, which was at the predicted hidden height of that mountain? Look where it is. It's right on the black horizon line, probably within a few feet. And that was just basically using the earth curve calculator. Now, everything on that mountain below that line is hidden by the curve of the earth. And you can see it very clearly as we fade the image from Google Earth out and go right back to the JTOL and Media One image. This is a globe proof. Now, Mr. Riley, if you had any integrity, you would put out a video right now acknowledging that this is proof positive of a curved Earth a spherical Earth, because this is no compression, this is no atmospheric lensing, this is no perspective. This is curvature, pure and simple. Now, notice that Gilman Hot Springs is well below the level of the horizon, and you can check that on Google Earth if you wish. You'll see the elevation there, and you can confirm this elevation both with the advanced curve calculator and on Google Earth. Well, folks, that's science. It's incontrovertible and clear as can be. Thank you all very much for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy. We'll be seeing you around soon.